Queen's Park Rangers and Wimbledon both began the Premier League knowing that every season would be a struggle both on and off the pitch. But whilst the Dons have met the challenge head-on, QPR have fallen into obscurity. QPR have never been one of London's top clubs, but in the 60s and 70s, entertainment reigned at Loftus Road, as one of their most famous players remembers. It was a magnificent football club, winning things. You know, we won the third division championship, won the second division championship, we won the League Cup along the way, uh, great times in, the, in, the, in the, the old first division. Even after I left and Stan Bowles came, we, you know, QPR was still a brilliantly exciting team. Um, and it's just the football club has lost its way, as simple as that. QPR figured in the first live Monday night football match, a game well remembered for Andy Sinton's spectacular strike. Jerry Francis was their manager. In 1976, he captained Rangers to second place, their highest ever league position. In 1993, they would finish fifth. Fifth is an outstanding performance for a club like QPR. Um, the only way you could have built on it was to have kept your players and to add to them, really. Uh, certainly not by losing your best players, um, which unfortunately we did. So, I mean, to stay still in, you know, seventh and eighth position like we did for the next couple of years anyway, on top of losing players, was, was a great achievement by the club. But Rangers would sell their top players, notably Andy Sinton and Les Ferdinand. Their replacements were either not of the same calibre or not fully developed. It had serious implications. We'd lost David Seaman, we'd lost Paul Parker. Um, we'd managed to cover it. Um, we, got, we bought Darren Peacock from, uh, from Hereford for about 100, 150, 200,000 pounds, and obviously sold him on for two and a half, three million pounds. Um, but you, it, it, it's, you struggle to actually keep on producing those players to sell on. And uh, gradually, uh, the, the squad was being eroded. It drags the supporters down, it drags you down, it drags the other players down because you're seeing good players go. Although, you know, you're, you're bringing in players that maybe eventually in a season or so might be as good, you know, like the Trevor Sinclair situation. It's just, it's just what happens at the time, you know, and uh, it's certainly uh, demoralising, I think, all round. In 1994, with Rangers struggling in the league, chairman Richard Thompson offered Rodney Marsh the post of chief executive. Thompson felt he needed a man to liaise between the board and the manager, but the idea would have grave consequences for the club. Richard Thompson is a very, very bright man. He's a very, very intelligent man, and he was ahead of the game. He recognised to bring in a Rodney Marsh at a QPR would have been a good move. I agree with that, obviously. <laughs> but it's come to pass that Spurs have done it with David Pleat. Um, Sid, Manchester City have done it with Dennis Stewart. When they've brought in former players that have got a business sense as well, to be in that position between the board of directors and the chairman and the team manager. In America, every team, every sports franchise in America has that person. And I feel that eventually, in this country, we'll have the same situation as they do in the States. <laughs> Rodney Marsh arrived at Lotus Road all smiles for the televised home game against Liverpool. But one man was still in the dark. I read in the paper and I, read, I heard on the radio and uh, I was told that Rodney Marsh, who was supposedly coming in as director of football or transfers or something like that, um, was uh, at the game and that was going to be the case and no one had said anything to me at all. No one had asked me, no one had mentioned anything to me. Jerry Francis, in essence, at that time would have been working under me. Um, but I would have had no say in the team or the tactics or the way the team was chosen. That would be the team manager's job, who would have been Jerry in this particular case. Um, my responsibility would have been more than that. Um, in terms of players and players going and staying and that type of thing, but only with the permission of the manager, and we would have worked together. That would have been the idea. Really, I think uh, the people there knew me very, very well, and, and if something like that would have happened, I think they knew the first thing I would have done. Um, perhaps that's why they did it. Marsh took his seat in the director's box, but it was clear that there was more than discomfort from the Rangers manager. We beat Liverpool, fortunately enough, and um, I resigned straight afterwards. I came out of it 
pretty badly because it looked like that I'd gone in after Jerry Francis's job, which is absolute nonsense. That wasn't the case at all. I don't want to be a team manager of a football club. It went on a few more days, a few, few different discussions and that, but uh, then it came to the same thing. I didn't feel that I could work with people that I couldn't trust and certainly could go behind my back and, and do other things. And, uh, you know, that was the situation. And the ironic thing for me was that, um, you know, if Rodney Marsh was the right thing for the club, I don't know why he wasn't appointed when I left. There was a couple of clauses in the contract that I wanted that Richard Thompson, and to his credit, he's a good businessman, he didn't want those clauses in the, in the agreement. And therefore, we couldn't uh, end up, we didn't do a deal. I think the fans felt that Rodney Marsh's intervention was really a case of poking his nose in and not really understanding the, the, the intricacies and the subtleties of the situation. Um, I think he'd spent rather too long in America to get a full appreciation of, of what was uh, the state of the club at the time. Things had moved on since he was there as a player, as a cult hero. And unfortunately, I think it, it, uh, it dented his standing at, at QPR a lot, and that, that's rather sad. But there was certainly a feeling that people supported Jerry Francis. I went back there, must have only been a couple of months afterwards uh, with my Tottenham team and uh, got a standing ovation which was very, very nice. We felt that Jerry had done a good job at Queen's Park Rangers and, and his exit, the way he left, and, you know, it was a, a bit of a sour taste left in the mouth on the, on the way he left, but um, I suppose that's football, things like that happen in football and, um, you know, as players you've just got to pick yourself up and, and go again with the next manager. That man was well known to the players, former captain Ray Wilkins. His appointment met unanimous um, approval from fans, boards, everyone alike, because they, we all felt that Ray Wilkins was perfect managerial material. When Frank and I first took over the side, we were, I think, fifth from bottom at the time of the Premier League. And I just wanted to attempt to put a smile back on the faces of the players and, and get them to enjoy the football and, and, and play. And fortunately, they, they played very well, our lads, and we, we climbed as high as high as sixth position at one stage. He was different class. He really gave the, the lads and the club a real boost, the supporters as well. And, uh, you know, we went on a great run uh, all that year. We just missed out on, the, on European football. I think we finished um, eighth, I think it was, that, uh, that year. Wilkins' appointment lifted the gloom at Loftus Road. Spearheaded by Les Ferdinand, they pulled clear of the relegation mire and on to safety. There was a very long honeymoon period. He took us from 17th to 8th, and, but there was still a feeling at the end of it that perhaps even though we'd finished 8th, we really just narrowly avoided relegation. certain situations I would not stand for and one of them was selling Les Ferdinand that time uh, which which may have been the uh, one of the reasons why I was forced to leave the club um, but um, you know there's no way of actually finding that out but but certainly from my point of view um, I needed Les Ferdinand to stay there at the time. Had Jerry stayed I'd have probably still left because I felt that I'd gone as far as I could go with Queen's Park Rangers. You know, I had some fantastic times there. Um, and totally, really enjoyed my football while I was there. But I, I just felt I got to a stage in my career where I was at, at a stalemate and I needed to go on and try and improve Les Ferdinand as a player. He gave us a sense of being a, a class team. Uh, he frightened defenders. He was very important to us. We went on a, a club trip and me and Ray um, sat in a hotel bar in Barbados and um, discussed the future. And, um, you know, I said, I felt it was time for me to move on. Um, you know, I felt I'd done as much as I could do at Queen's Park Rangers. And he, in turn, said, um, with my manager's hat on, I don't want you to leave Queen's Park Rangers, but as a friend, um, yeah, I believe it's time that you move on as well. Les has scored 26 goals a season before. Uh, so naturally, we're going to have a, a, a problem there. But um, that was just one of those things. You know, we, we slipped up on numerous occasions that, that season um, whilst still in the Premier League. Um, we gave away some silly goals of vital periods. We feared a struggle and our fears were realised because we did struggle and we were really relegation candidates and played as such. Fans expected the money from Ferdinand's sale to be reinvested in the team, but despite an alarming run of form from October, which saw Rangers go ten weeks without a league win, Wilkins did not strengthen his squad. There were players that I wanted to buy at that period, and that was the only time that we possibly had a little financial restriction upon us. Uh, the players that I wanted 
um, were, were just a bit too much for us at the time. Um, but I felt we needed those players to, to maintain our place in the, in the Premier League. Rangers slipped into the bottom three in December where they would stay for the season. Relegation was confirmed in their last home game despite an emphatic victory over West Ham. It was the first time ever that we'd been involved in the relegation struggle at the end. Uh, maybe the fact that we hadn't been involved in that, maybe that counted against us. Um, some of the other clubs, maybe Coventry, Southampton, you know, they, they'd, you know, they'd always been involved in that. Um, maybe they knew what they were doing. Rangers fans put their demise down to Chairman Richard Thompson and his policy of selling the team's best players. Ray Wilkins does not agree. My shoulder full responsibility for us being relegated. I was the manager of the club, so that's the way I see it. Um, I wouldn't blame Mr Thompson at all, no. As a manager, you're into it and supporters are into it to be successful and to, uh, and to win things. And I think they all realised that maybe at some stage players would have to go, but maybe we could have held on to them a little bit longer. And um, it's pretty disheartening for a manager and the work you put in. It was very frustrating um, to see a long line of players, quality players being sold off and not replaced, eventually leading to our demise to a, a, a first division club as we are now. You cannot continue uh, to sell your best players and hope to be successful. The players have to know that you're behind, the, behind them and that you want success. And if you don't have that, you have nothing. 